am. Welcome, guys. Alexi here. Gonna we're a few minutes early, getting prepared, getting ready for talking about what mental reprogramming actually looks like. So get ready, get ready, everybody, because this is gonna be fun. Mental programming. Anthony is gonna be jumping on, and we're actually gonna be going live. You're gonna be seeing the process happening live. Yesterday we had our first session, and uh, today is session two out of twelve of what it looks like to catch your old programming. So it's gonna be exciting, live action here. This is my first live video in years. And um, like I said, we're a little, a little early here. I'm a little early on today. If you haven't caught that, we should be starting at, I'm in Hawaii, it's 2 p.m. here. And it's 8 p.m. where Anthony is, he's in Albany, New York. So quite a difference, that's a six hour difference between us. Um, Yep, it's going to be a, a nice, fun conversation. And hopefully I can get everything going. So yeah, waiting for him. There's not enough cord, apparently. Okay. Woohoo! That's perfect. Okay, Anthony's coming on. We're about to be live with Anthony. Joining in. Uh, let me put. Yep. Flip, flip. Welcome, Tony, for day number two. What's up? What's up? How you feeling, Tony? Good. I just got to prop up my phone from falling over here. Oop, that's still tilted. Okay, like I said, we're, I'm in Hawaii here. It's bright, sunny. It's uh, nice and toasty, 80 degrees here. In Albany, what's the weather there like? Um, It was a really, actually beautiful day. Uh, it hit the uh, low 50s, but it was nice and, oh, like mid 50s roughly. So I probably peaked at close to 60, which was super warm for us here. Um, Freezing cold here. That's like bone chilling cold. Yeah, things are finally getting green and like grass is starting to increase in its uh, rich color and certain plants are growing. So spring's around the corner here. We did have snow randomly one of these past mornings last week. So welcome to New York. Yes, Well, let's get right into it. Welcome everyone who's just uh, joining in. And, uh, well, it's kind of hard to read the names. And uh, what's up, what's up, welcome everybody. Uh, right now, we're gonna introduce ourselves, who we are, what we are, and uh, we're gonna jump right in. Anthony, welcome, welcome to the Clarifiers channel today. Thank like you for having yourself. me. Yeah, so my name is Anthony Desatnikov. My Instagram handle is Abha Magi. And um, I currently do construction work uh, full-time for a company here in Saratoga Springs. And um, I'm working on some of my own ideas and projects and at the same time just working on improving myself and uh, overcoming some of the past traumas and issues. If you guys have followed my account, you might have seen a video on my IG, which is a little like 12 minutes long, where I was just really raw and kind of sharing exactly where I was at and what I was going through. And um, since I created that video, I've been constantly looking for ways to begin to work on this and improve it. So I've worked with Alexi in the past. He's mentored me um, for a couple of years and had a lot of benefit from that. So I'm not new to the mental mentorship world, but I had kind of been on my own for a while. So I was looking to get some more clarity on figuring out how to get through my stuff. So fast forward, meet with Alexi. Uh, well, we just had a call, started talking about what we're going through like we usually do since we don't live next to each other anymore. And um, he was helping me go through last night. This is the first time I did this process. It's basically the gist of it is it's reprogramming your mind. It's reprogramming the subconscious mind, the images that are there, and um, replacing the previous feelings, whatever they were, with something positive that encourages, inspires you to keep moving and growing. So, yeah, that's me, and uh, that's what I'm really working on, just moving myself and becoming the best version. My name is Alexi Katko. I run clarifiers.com. For me, mentoring is like my big, big thing. I love to help people, not so much as to mentor them to tell them what to do, but it comes
comes out of my own personal challenges since I was uh, kid number five of six in our family. Uh, guidance in life was very limited. And uh, so for me, the biggest challenge was how do I figure out what I need to do? Maybe it was my upbringing, maybe it was just my brain, but I always was searching for ways to understand life, its principles, the rules, how do you function properly. And early in my life, my grandpa became my mentor and he really, really, really changed my life. But shortly after he started mentoring me, he passed away from leukemia. So I was kind of left, like, oh, what do I do now? Kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> really confused. So then I got another mentor who was my cousin. And I just seen the way he mentored me was just mind blowing. It really changed how I saw life and how one person can make a difference. And so throughout my whole 20s, I just poured myself into learning that art, that skill. And I love to help people understand. You might be asking, understand what? Well, just understanding things. For example, mentoring is a big thing I love to help people learn. And today's topic subject is about our brain. How does our brain work? How do we achieve the things we want to achieve. So it's really simple where we start, if we want to achieve something, you got to know where you are and where you're going. That's it. That's really that simple. And we're talking about this advancing yesterday. And you said, I want to do all these things. Me, I want to do all these things. And that's all success is. Know where you are, know where you want to go, and fill in the blanks. But how do you fill in the blanks? And so that's where... That's who I am, that's what I love to do, is help people fill in those blanks and know what they need to know at what stage of the game. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I wanna jump into the clarifiers, what that is. It's literally that simple, guys. Helping you understand, so simply enough, so you know, here's what I need to do, here's why I'm doing it, and here's how it's gonna affect my life. Um, for example, our brains, if you look behind you, here's just one part of you trying to figure out how to achieve a goal in your life. Well, it starts from there. It goes to here. There's a lot of information. There, there's this information here. There's just It can get overwhelming very quick, very easy. And so that's what I do. I simplify the process and give it to people in bite chunk sizes. And that's what, uh, that's what I'm all about. That's what Clarifier is all about. And you learn the information. And then you learn how to apply it effectively, effectively. And then thirdly is you learn how to pass that knowledge on. Learning is one thing, passing it on is another. Would you agree with that statement, Anthony? Yeah, um, I think a lot of times when we think we've learned something, we've just actually become familiar with the concept. But then when someone, like I, he asked me yesterday, what's the difference between deductive and inductive reasoning? Now off the bat, I was like, oh, deductive is this, but what's inductive? And it's like, I don't know. I thought I knew, but I don't know it well enough to actually explain it. So what I've personally realized is if you can't explain it simply enough for someone else to easily understand yep. without being in that field, you don't fully get it. So I definitely agree with that statement. Yeah. Okay, today, we're right now, we're jumping right in, guys. Thanks for joining. Everybody that joined, thank you very much. And you're definitely in for a treat. I highly suggest for you to grab a word. On the pen attack. <laughs> Grab yourself a pen. This whole conversation is going to be a waste of time if you do not take notes, guys. All of progress, if you summarize to why do people succeed versus fail, they will take notes at a higher chance of succeeding. It's not guaranteed, but you just increase your chances of succeeding in life a whole lot more. Whatever because you're retaining the information. That, that's, yes. that's the important part. Grab you're wiring it into your brain. Grab a paper, exactly. Like I said, you see my background here, guys, and this is just a portion. Let me show you. Let me show you a few other parts of my room. There's, there's all that. There, there's this. Like when I say take notes, take notes because eventually you'll be like, oh, this connects to that, connects to this. Therefore, that's what I need to do. And that's how progress is made. You make the dots connect. And by taking notes, it makes it a lot easier to connect the dots. So a lot of times information is here, 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 here because – each person, each individual is different in what they need to do to achieve what they want to achieve. But the process of success is the same for everybody. Um, going into that, I'm going to be flipping the screen and sharing with you guys my, uh, my whiteboard, so to speak. Here's going to be my whiteboard. And I already took a bunch of notes and I'm going to be sharing. Today, we're going to be going in two parts. The first part 
is going to be very, very simple. It's going to be all about the concepts. Okay. We're going to just run through the concepts. And then once we run through the concepts, which should take only a few minutes, we're going to dive into the most important part is actually the process. Okay. You got to do the actual process. The process is a six step. Think of these as two pillars. This is just information you're going to hear. This is actually the steps, and we'll call them the six pillars of um, understanding what mental reprogramming actually looks like. And that's today's topic. So you ready, Anthony, for this? We're going to do a quick recap, and then we'll go from there and jump into the actual application of part two. You ready, Tony? Ready. Ready, Freddy. Awesome. Okay. Part one, the concept. So it starts with, okay, you find yourself feeling a, a little down, a little bummed, defeated, unmotivated, or you feel triggered, and then your body is just like, uh, last week I had something like this. And no matter how long you've been on this process, your old programming at some point wants to kick back into gear. But that's why we go through this process, so that we reprogram our mind so that it doesn't affect us. So... When was the last time you found yourself feeling any one of these emotions? Like when I was doing all this study, I just felt overwhelmed. I mean, you can look at this. It, it might, this, this is all I actually got. There's a method to this whole madness. After going through all this right here, I just felt so overwhelmed and I felt like giving up. So I stopped. Okay. I noticed that feeling. What's, what's the next thing you do? Okay. And the concept, well, you, uh, take a walk, just, uh, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea or whatever you want to drink. Just take a little break. Take a breather. Do not try to get rid of your feeling because it's a golden moment. Go grab a pen and a paper and then sit down and actually start working backwards from the feeling you just got. So I have it in two steps right here. You say, okay, uh, for example, last week I said, I feel like giving up. That was the end result. Because I'm like, what's the point of this? There's no point of doing all this. It doesn't mean anything. And so I'm like, okay, that's the feeling. That's the end result. And then step two is you start actually working your way back. You write down back to the eventual first domino. What triggered this feeling? So you go, I'm like, okay, I feel like giving up. Why do I feel like giving up? I kind of looked around. I'm like, uh, maybe I'm, I'm feeling very overwhelmed. It's like, well, why am I overwhelmed? At what point did I start feeling overwhelmed? And I realized the day before I was going – into the information just for the sake of information but the reason i was going into the, all this information is to clarify the process so then i realized that okay eventually i'm like okay i lost sight for about 10 hours what the purpose of my my um all the studying was and once i realigned to why i'm doing this all of a sudden i got a burst of energy and i and it's been a few days since and it's like the, the upward trajectory is going so the third thing, uh, the goal of doing all this, this whole process, is to use the quote-unquote negative experience. Because well, when you hear the words, I feel down, I feel bummed, I feel defeated, how do you think of those things, Anthony? Are they positive or negative for the most part? Typically, those words are associated with a negative connotation. Yes. Now, if you look at a car and the gauge says you're nearly empty, do you hate that gauge or do you, are you like, oh, that's a good thing. It's telling me I got to go get gas. Do you think of it as a bad thing or a good thing? Um, in the past, I used to think of it as a bad thing until you introduced that idea of the gauge, the gas gauge. So yeah, like I, um, I agree just, with that. It's like it's neither good nor bad. It's just telling you what's going on. And that's the same thing with our emotions, our emotional state. And that's why this process is so beautiful, guys. You go from taking a negative emotion to making it a very positive experience. So now, again, that's the goal of this process is to learn how to use it to empower yourself, empowerment instead of disempowerment, okay? Does that make sense? That's what yeah. we're trying to achieve is to use it for our empowerment and not our disempowerment. So yeah, every time you get one of those emotions, it's part of your old programming kicking in and trying to get you in a state of mind. Now. What you're trying to become, what you're, uh, the step you're taking towards is becoming a detective. Think of yourself as a detective. You get that negative emotion, kick in the detective gear. Go get a cup of coffee, get a pen, get a paper, and be like, okay, game on, like Donkey Kong. I don't know where that sound came from, but I like it. <laughs> this, 
So this is where you actually do have to use your willpower, guys. Um, become a detective. You have to sit down and don't let, like, the politics. They say that uh, never, never let a negative, never let a negative experience go to waste. Never let negative news go to waste. Um, for example, I worked for a granite shop once, and there was a company that was giving a lot of negative feed, um, news out there about us, which was totally lying. So, so many people got to know about us, about our name, and we used that as, as a, the, uh, the owner was like, oh my goodness, what do we do? I'm like, just give it about a couple months. People are going to start coming back and asking us, did we do this? And then we'll tell them, no, it's not true. And we got so much business out of it. So, again, become a detective of your negative experiences. And let me flip the camera over again. Become that detective, okay? This is use your willpower in a good way. Take that negative thing, pen, paper, cup of coffee, cup of tea, and sit yourself down. And as as uh, Jim Rohn says, what is easy to do is also easy not to do. Exactly. That's that's oh man, it's so easy not to do the easy things. <laughs> so, lastly, in this uh, in the concept pillar, there's six types of programming that we have in our brain. Okay, so this one is uh, new to Anthony. Did not go over this. But I'm going to write this one down. <laughs> I'm going to run through this one. And so you guys will be able to actually go through these videos. This video, we're going to post it on YouTube. And we're going to have it as a... Um, you can look through it and look at the at the um, video itself and take notes on it. And I'll add it in the uh, description. So there's six types of programming. Now, what do I mean by programming? Well, let's start with this. The first one is false beliefs. What kind of... We all have some kind of false beliefs about ourselves or about things. For example, you say, um, I failed at a couple businesses, right? I succeeded and I failed. And after a failure or two, I'll be like, well, I'm bad at, uh, like, over here. Because I failed in two other businesses, I'm never going to succeed in any business or creating a business. That's a false uh, belief about myself. This is real. Essentially, you're you're just pull out an uh, interpretation from an experience that you know in that case was I'm a bad businessman, yep. and attach it to that feeling. Yep. So the other type of um, programming that you have in your mind is the the second level is uh, or second path you can take is second guessing yourself, putting yourself down or undermining yourself. That's all in one file. So you okay. you go do something and then you. You, we all know what second guessing feels like. Uh, putting yourself down. Um, I have a friend here in Hawaii who always, who often says, uh, like, oh, "I'm so dumb" or uh, "I'm stupid." That's putting. That's an old programming that you have to slow down and then go through this process that we're going to be talking about just a little later, so you can understand where's that coming from. This programming in your mind that's making you play this this thought out. Because remember, what we feel is how we act and then how we act is but people respond to that it's well it's I, isn't it thoughts result into feelings and feelings result into action yes and actions okay. produce our results yeah yeah it's okay feedback loop if you call yourself dumb well how are you going to feel about yourself negative people feel what you feel not what you say that's why a lot of times parents tell us information and uh, uh or people in our life who give us information and we do nothing with it because they most likely aren't doing it. So the uh, fourth type of programming that we have in our in our uh, minds, I call it bad programming. Why do I call it? What does that mean? What is bad programming? Well, that's um. Let's go hold on a second. A little shaky here. Bad programming. Bad. Bad programming is like bad religious beliefs. Um, throughout the centuries, you can you can see that happening a lot. Even now, you have. Um, I pick religion because it's something we're all familiar with. I'm not picking on it, but we're all familiar with it. Like, if you've been ever in a religion or a belief system, even inside of each group, they have disagreements. Um, uh, there's some beliefs that, like, some other some uh, god or there's this god thing calls the shots of success or failure. You have no say in it. Um, kids have a bad programming. You should be seen but not heard. That's pro bad programming is what I call. So that's one, that's number four of the six types of programming that we have in our minds. Uh, or that's three. Number four, that's the one Anthony and I, we talked about yesterday. That's past negative experiences. Past. 
that's where very often we just uh, blame other people's. We um, it's other people's fault. It's essentially experiences that when we look back, we think we had no control and that we didn't yes. do anything to deserve them. But in in this process, you'll see how you actually get to the root of that's not the case. Yep, yep. Um, the fifth type of programming we have in our mind is the uh, lack of motivation. Uh, we're questioning everything. Why you're you question yourself, oh, why am I even doing this? What's the purpose of doing this? So all those thoughts are in this fifth group where you're just like, you just all of a sudden your motivation literally collapses. And believe it or not, oftentimes it's literally because you're just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of, um, that kind of programming, uh, what does it look like in real life? It's, uh, you just feel like quitting. If you're doing something, all of a sudden you feel like quitting, well, you're experiencing level five programming in your mind or uh, path number five uh, you you see no pers purpose in continuing something you feel overwhelmed that's uh, level five uh, kind of programming we have in our brain and the level six this one uh, is uh, Bob Proctor talks uh, talks about this a lot it's a uh, you view your life as if you're an extra in the movie of your own life like others, and what does this look like in, 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 in reality? People think that this is where you think that um, others are better than you. They deserve success, and you don't. That uh, you think of yourself, well, I'm just a floor sweeper, and I'm bound to be a floor sweeper the rest of my life. That's where people think that you're just an extra in the movie of your own life. Others are better than you. Got that. That was a good one. So those are the six types of programming. Today, uh, yesterday and today, we're actually just going to be going into level four right here, guys, of past negative experiences. How do you take that programming and use it for your benefit? Woo! My notes just went everywhere. Let's pretend my, my uh, <laughs> board just got um, erased. Luckily, I numbered all these, so I'll be able to put them back <laughs> Okay, guys. Anthony, you ready for this one? The process? Yes, sir. So, now it's your turn to share. What is that? What is the one negative experience that you keep replaying in your mind that um, eventually leads you to feeling blah, poopy, and yucky? So, this one might be a little heavy, so just heads up, everybody. But um, at the end of the day, over the past couple weeks i've had certain things outside of my control um life events in a sense you could say that brought up a really painful memory from the past um i won't get into too much detail but essentially one of my good friends at the time um blacked out on is some fake xanax and ended up uh, attempting to kill himself at while he was staying at my place it was a really traumatic event for me for multiple reasons because he was a childhood friend, so there was a really strong connection, and there was no reasoning. So it was just basically trying to keep him alive. So that event um, was about three or four years back, actually. So I hadn't really been thinking about it until something popped up, which involved that individual. We haven't been hanging out for over a year already due to other reasons, but it was just like I was at work. I got a, a message, and it was just like a flood of tears, emotions, I had that feeling, as he described, feeling like quitting. I literally just wanted to leave work. I felt overwhelmed, and it was a very debilitating feeling, though. I'm, what I am proud of is, at the time, I pushed through, and I didn't quit and stop. So, that's the event. Um, I guess I'll label it as childhood friend. So, what I've been doing for the ones that we worked through yesterday is I kind of label them with a the name. So if it's like a painful big event that involved many things, like give it a symbolic kind of name. So childhood friend. This allows me to then really be able to look back on it and have clarity in exactly what I was writing and that. So, so yeah, okay. When, these, when this, incident, this incident itself comes into your mind and it just makes you, it, it gives, makes you go down a downward, downward spiral and it creates a result in your life. This is where step number one comes in, guys. 
okay? This is where the rubber meets the road. So step one, you ask yourself this question. What did you actually want to create before the incident that the experience allowed you to accomplish? And so the whole premise of what we're going about now is I'm going to tell you, you are the author. You just On your pieces of paper, guys, on your notes, write down, I am the author. Let me write it down in the comments. And essentially, this statement is you're taking ownership of your life. It's it's putting your hands back on the wheel, metaphorically. It's not like, Jesus, take the, take the wheel. It's like, no, I got to take this back. <laughs> take control. I think, you know, when it comes to matters of, like, religion, if God is the greatest in all of, in all of everything, our minds are the greatest creation. And so... I am the author. That's the premise of what we're going to be going forward on. Again, let me ask the question. What did you actually want to create before the incident that the experience allowed you to accomplish? So with this case, Anthony, how do we, how do we want to title this experience? So, or what? yeah, I'm just going to give it the short name, Childhood Friend. Um, okay, so Childhood Friend, a thought, old, old thought just flooded into your brain. And yep. This is um, the, um, the experience, okay? The experience flooded back in your mind. Now, what we're going to look forward to or look around this experience is what is it that you actually wanted? What did that incident, that incident had to occur so that you can get something? And the principle we're running, the, the foundational principle is thoughts become things. What we think about most of the time, we get. And so that's how we can draw the conclusion or get to the conclusion that I am the author of everything. So you are the author of all your experiences because you have thought about them many times. When I was a kid in uh, grade school, I, uh, for years and years, a couple times a week, I would have to take a ride with my parents to help them clean a company. And I always thought about being in a hospital and being pitied by everybody it sounds a little twisted, but that's what it was. And for years I thought about this and repeated the story every time. And sometimes it was twice a week, an hour and a half there, an hour and a half back. I would imagine being in a hospital and people just being around and being like, oh, Alexi. And guess what, guys? Believe it or not, when Anthony was 13, if you haven't caught, Anthony's my nephew and uh, I'm Anthony's uncle. <laughs> He's the oldest, oldest nephew of 20-something nephews and nieces. And so I was thinking about this for years, and guess what? I survived an explosion. I lost a few fingertips and nearly lost my life that night. I created that experience. And so that's what so, we're doing right now with Anthony. We're going live about this. You know, that brought back a quote, careful what you wish for. We say that to kids a lot of the times, and this story really exemplifies that. Really be careful what you wish for because you yes. got to get it. At some point. Yes. Careful what you wish for because you just might get it all. Guys, everything you think about, you're going to be getting. Because that's the law of this world. That's how it was, it's set up. That's what this is right here between, between the ears. So, again, the incident happened. But, so, what did you actually want to create before the incident happened? The incident happened because, so, the incident, the childhood experience, uh, sorry, what was the title? We want to give it to it again? Childhood friend. Childhood friend happened because Anthony, you were thinking about you want this to get you want um, this. I was thinking about result. something that I wanted in my life to manifest. Essentially, so you're thinking I want this result, this result, this result, this result. I'm getting closer, 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 and then life is like, bam! Here you go. It happened. And that's where this question comes in. What did you actually want to create before the incident that the experience that happened? that actually allowed you to accomplish, okay? So, so let's answer, let's dive into that. All right, I was just thinking about it, and um, it kind of hit me as you were kind of walking through the process of what it might be. So at that time in my life, I had had another event that I called the Tower had happened about half a year prior. 
well, not even half a year, like two months prior, which was a very intense past experience in of itself. But at that time, when I got to the bottom of this experience, there was a reoccurring theme that I noticed from my other experiences, which was the freedom to be myself, to, to truly express myself in my own creative ways. So I had this tower event, and now that we're doing the childhood friend event, I'm actually thinking about it. And at the time, that was what I was really wanting, because um, to give a little context, at that time, I was living in a one-bedroom uh, room that I was renting. Um, my friend was not in a good place at the time due to some things that had happened, and he was basically crashing and just be in a not good state. There was a lot of alcohol involved, as you can imagine. Um, yes, so, uh, one second. So, guys, it's very, very important to write down the process, going back to what's easy to do is easy not to do. So do your best to, like Anthony mentioned it, you'll keep on hearing me. Anthony, write it down, write it down, write it down. Because the thing about memory is if thing A happened and you remember it, and then the next time, like a week later, you try to remember the same experience, you don't remember what actually happened. You remember what you remembered last time. That's why it's important to write things down and you actually have clarity over it. So I wrote what I'm going to write down is the first thing was freedom to be myself in my own creative ways was the thing that I was actually trying to create at that time. What I was thinking about mostly subconsciously, I wasn't actually thinking about it um, openly as far as I remember. Um, but I'm, I'm reflecting back. So I'm living there. I have a one bedroom apartment. Now, this was the first time I moved out myself. So I previously grown up in a community. It was with my family. I was always around people. So for the first time being out on my own, life was trying to teach me some lessons, but I was seeking old comfort. I'm not looking back. And that old comfort was a childhood friend, even though at the time what he really needed to do was to be home and to work on some of his issues. But essentially, I would enable him to come over um, so he had a place. That way we could drink and do stuff. Now, I didn't really like drinking, but I just didn't like being alone. Um, so I'm going to draw an arrow down and label it 1B. I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second. And I think the underlying re lesson I was actually trying to teach myself was how to set healthy boundaries. Um, because that is something that ties into my past traumas of where I was seeking the true freedom to be myself in my own creative ways, as I wrote down here. Um, but to do that, you actually have to learn how to set boundaries. And I had never learned that. So now I'm looking back and I actually see that what I was really trying to teach myself is even if you care about someone, um, you sometimes have to set the boundary because you have to focus on yourself. Um, and because I didn't, a lot of painful experiences happened because I kept letting things slip in my life. Um, so let me write this down. 1B, learn how to set boundaries, healthy boundaries. So if you guys can see, it'll be reversed. I usually write the top and then I kind of underline it to make sure that's the heading. I wrote the little number four because from the six type of programming, when I put this on the wall, I can look for the number and see, oh, that's that kind of programming that I, I work through. Um, and then I wrote, I am the author at the top because that's the, the main thing we're trying to really realize here and remember and believe and not just believe, but know. So then one, which was freedom to be myself in my own creative way. And then if you, so I'll show you the first one that I did with Alexi, the initial thing that I thought that I was trying to create wasn't it. So then I thought it was a second thing, but it wasn't it as we clarified. So what you might find is like I'm happening here again. I thought it was this, but then as I'm thinking about it, reflecting, I'm like, oh no, it's actually a little bit more specific, which is learning how to set healthy boundaries. It's not just being free myself. So now I have well, answered point were technically freed of what you wanted to be free ish. Yep. And now it's a, another level of learning. You yeah, it was. Learn how to put boundaries in. Yeah, and I, I will give you guys something interesting that I've noticed. I'm doing this for day two, but I've already noticed a pattern from past negative events um, or past negative experiences. And I'm looking and I'm like, the lessons are pretty much the same. It was just that at the time, I did not realize the lesson, 
and a you know not as painful experience and then the next one that I'm, I look over which is like the most painful the underlying thing is still the same even though it's a whole different context so in this process I'm I'm actually really seeing how I am the author because it's like I'm wanting to learn this thing I'm actively ignoring the lessons and um, it's causing me more and more pain because life is escalating the intensity of the lessons so that's why I would highly suggest to learn how to do this and to do it because it's when we did it for when we did the first one that feeling whenever I, that event which was computer being smashed that event anytime I thought about it years later it just felt bad you didn't like it and it was one of those memories you wish you could forget at the time it was a feeling when I thought about it and when it happened it was hopelessness despair depression but and it was 10 years ago basically roughly estimating is when this event happened but yesterday we spent about 10 minutes 10 15 minutes because he was walking me through the process and now when I think of that event I smile and it actually makes me feel good and empowered because I realize what I was really trying to do was it was the freedom to be me in my own creative ways and that was around 12 13 um, and then it's like the next event boom this was a really big um, event that involved my whole family and community and the underlying thing that I was trying to learn was still um, freedom to be me in my own creative ways but I'm now looking at it because it's again popped up the third time it's we think that being ourselves and free is like an end destination. But what I'm actually starting to see with this process is it's more of like a spiral staircase and you come back around to the same places but with the new information so you're looking at it completely different. Um, so, yeah, so let's uh, continue. Back to answering this first question. Uh, now that you've looked at it, you know, you've shared all this, you're talking it out loud. What did you actually want to create before the incident that the experience allowed you to accomplish? Learn how to set healthy boundaries and how it actually ended up accomplishing. Well, you would think. Next step. Which is oh, yeah. the next step, which is okay, let's go. Two guys, right here. You can take a snapshot of your camera. So, step two is see you are the author. You need to see that you created that current reality you are living in. So, Anthony didn't make his friend overdose. Anthony didn't do any of that. It doesn't mean because of you, that person did that. No. Because you were thinking you want to learn this thing, you are naturally, because you're not aware of it, your subconscious mind is picking out things that you're going to end up doing that it is going to... It's attracting that exact event closer to me. It was yeah. my exact actions or inactions that resulted in that event happening, but it was not di a direct impact of my will, in a sense, um, where it's like I didn't do something. So this is more of you just sitting back and realizing, holy moly, yes, I am the author of this event, that I authored it for myself in my life right now. That's why the first step is so critical is asking yourself, what did I actually want to create before the incident? The incident happened, what did I want to create before it that the experience actually gave me? So this is more of like a reminder reaffirmation, which leads us to step three, okay? You ready for this one, Tony? One sec. I'm just trying to think of what to write for two, like. All right, I'll fill it in later. Let's go to step three. See, you are the author. I mean, that's that's what I have. If you take a right. look right here, Tony. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll just write that. See, see you, you are. are... I'm telling you, the moment you see that you're the author, yes. Like, I've had experiences in my life going from explosions to, to getting, yeah, to, to getting accused of being a drug dealer, a Satanist, and all this stuff. And I never touched a drug in my life or any of that stuff. But when you look back to it, once you realize you take the responsibility to your, for yourself, for what's happening in your life, holy moly, it just takes the weight off, the, the weight of the world off your shoulders, and you're like, who? Yeah, booyah! You get into that, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, yeah, I'm the one that's, that's in charge here. And uh, so, yeah, to see that you're the author is, in step two, is very, very uplifting. Oh, it hit me. 
So for step two, if I were to summarize for my childhood friend thing, uh, see you are the author, I see that I was the author because I did not say no, even though I knew deep down I should say no many times. So that's why I like to I like to really summarize it to like a one word type thing. Um, just for, so you guys know that way I know I've gotten to the core or like when I read it, I'm like, yeah, that, that feels like exactly what I mean. So I am ready for step three. Yeah, like a uh, objectionalist said that the things we use like computers are just tools, uh, not us. I think it's easy to get these mixed in the digital era. Totally true. Yes. It's uh, very I agree. easy to blame other things. Uh, it's going to that programming part guys. what we're talking about. It's, um, it's, it's blaming others and other things of uh, it's outside of you it's not you so yeah it's very easy to blame things because that's natural that's how we were most of us are programmed in our early life is saying that it's others and especially if you're in the religious belief system nothing wrong with them guys I'm just saying it typically happens a lot in them where we give the power to somebody else so yeah it's very easy to, to blame others so three Step number three, guys, we're halfway through it. Reframe as positive, okay? Reframe. Get this thing focusing. Ooh, there we go. So reframe as positive. That's step three. You want to reframe this, this experience as positive. And we'll go into some examples. At this stage, you are switching the storyline. The experience is no longer negative. It was positive, and you actually orchestrated it by your thoughts. Anthony uh, yesterday mentioned this great thing. I'm going to bring this one up. Uh, Anthony's like, oh, so that means technically you're the director and you are the, um, how do you say, uh, the director and the um, actor. You're the director and the actor, and getting mad at other people is kind of ludicrous because they're just acting out the script you wrote. Yes. So, so it's course. like if you think of it like that. <laughs> so it's very easy when we blame others, we get into this negative state, and then we give authorship to others. But if we work it back, like, reframe the situation as positive all of a sudden you're like yeah i can see how i'm the author of this and then you can see how the in uh the um incident played into your desire of what you actually want to achieve now for example i want freedom i wanted to be free from a certain group of people and little did i know that i had to get accused of some of, of, of falsely accused of being a drug dealer being a satan leader group and then raping somebody did I want those things, those accusations? No, but it led me to get what I wanted, okay? So that experience happened. So again, I'm the, I was the author of it so that I can get what I want. Again, step three, reframe it as positive. So like Anthony, for you, that experience itself, when it happened, how did you, how did it feel for you? So going back, that experience was actually quite, intense because if I recall at the time I was doing a lot of um, psychedelic drugs and I think I was on acid so I was not only awake but I would not be able to sleep for 12 hours and I was extremely stimulated so uh, the whole evening was basically a feeling of dread um, because you basically saw your best friend's face go from normal to it just switches and it's it's a different person and then that person is trying to do something you know terrible and you're, you're in that kind of situation where you don't know what to do. You don't, do you call help? Um, do you, how do I manage the situation? And it's just like, so it was a very overwhelming situation. Um, at the time, I could only really focus on just trying to keep him from hurting himself and keeping him calm because um, there was a lot of aggression if he didn't get what he wanted. So I had to kind of like be smart about it. So the whole event was really intense, painful, and I didn't sleep for the whole night. And the next day, it made everything terrible. Um, looking back at the event, it was very, the feelings it kind of brought me up is despair and depression because it was like I had just lost my family and community um, a little bit prior to this, uh, very recently. So it felt like I almost lost my best friend that I'd grown up with, which was kind of like my last tether in a sense to the old world and old self that I knew. Um, so it was very... It was something I can't forget, and it was extremely painful, but he didn't remember the next day. So what ended up happening, because the Xanax caused him to black out, there was no memory of the event. So I told him, he was like, oh, crap. But that kind of, I, I kind of buried it. I was like, okay, at least, like, 
you know, he doesn't remember it, it's fine. He's not going to do that again. Um, so the overall experience was not not fun, but I was just grateful things turned out for the best because he also, at one point in the evening, while still completely blacked out, while I was cooking food, left and drove from one city to another city and somehow was managed to get there safely, not hit anybody. I mean, he could barely walk two, three feet without stumbling. So it was... It was one of those events where, like, even though I had all the pain, it was actually, and I'm not looking back, it was positive because it showed me that there is something beyond us that protects us at times. Because based on all logic, there was no possible way he could have made it home safely. So how are so. you taking this whole situation? And, and I know you just answered it. So, I mean, guys, we're going after this live. None of this is scripted. It's, it's live as, as live could be. And so often... Uh, I'm going to share with you what's happening throughout the process, so the, the, back, the background of the process steps. I typically ask the same question a lot of times back to back, and you'll be surprised to hear that the answer is different, It's or it, there's a different reason. So, Anthony, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. How, right now, looking back at it, if you're, if you're seeing that you're the author of this situation, how can you reframe it as a positive? so that it is going to be something to encourage you in the future instead of discourage you. One sec. Let me finish writing the last point, and I'll flip my camera so you guys can see it. Set. Healthy. I'm just taking notes, guys. I, um, I was talking with another one of my friends earlier today. We were uh, all going to be talking to each other for a week. We were talking about this. Um, the interview is easy not to do the Mr. Ring said, so... All right, I'm going to flip my camera. So, and you'll start off childhood trauma. Um, I realized it's what I wanted to teach myself was to learn how to set healthy boundaries. To see the author, I realized that I didn't take action and say no when I needed to. So to reframe it, I realized I thought I was helping my friends, so that was one of the overarching things. But really what I was doing was hurting myself and hurting him in the process too. That resulted in me experiencing pain. P pain, I uh, should add a cat one sec. So sometimes you'll notice that you'll think of something else that goes before. So in that arrow area, so the experiencing the pain um, made me reevaluate my current beliefs and um, decision making essentially. In the process of reevaluating, I realized I, I had to learn how to value myself. And from valuing myself is when I had to learn how to set healthy boundaries, which that actually resulted a year ago. Um, there was a basically kind of a clean break between me and this friend um, because his certain behaviors and actions were not in alignment with what I was trying to do. And I realized that I can't make the same mistake okay. that I made now looking back here. So let me just add this in really quick right here. Um, Reevaluate. Reevaluate my beliefs and actions. One of the things I want to share with you guys, um, oftentimes if you're just jumping in, uh, it might sound boring, the conversation, and naturally so, because you have to go through the whole process to be like, okay, I see where it's going, it's going. Uh, one thing I wanted to suggest for everybody's on, that if you wanted to go through this process live with me on Instagram with you, I'm more than happy to do that. Just shoot me a DM, and we can actually go through the process, because my goal is to help as many people as I can to start learning this. And this is just one of the pieces of the puzzle to reprogram your mind so that you can think differently to actually achieve the success you want to achieve. Yeah, so to run through it again, three, I thought I was helping my friend. In, in actual reality, what was happening was I was hurting myself and hurting him um, by enabling. That, that type of action resulted in experiencing pain. That pain caused me to actually reevaluate my beliefs and actions which one of the prior beliefs I realized was um, being a martyr and um, that kind of mentality where save somebody else at the cost of your own life. Um, 
it's it was it was more of the sense that I began to realize I value and care about the people around me more than I do about myself when I'm by myself. So um, I'm now looking back that that was one of the experiences I needed to a understand that I need to value myself and that I have value and that you can't pour out of an empty cup. And that results into setting healthy boundaries where healthy boundaries allow you to maintain who you are without um, compromising on what, I, you know, as, as Bob Proctor says, know where you are and where you want to get. It's like, I know where I am. I know where I want to get. So I set healthy boundaries to make sure that, you know, you don't go off track and go somewhere else. So step four, I'm ready for it. Okay. Step four, let me, let me do this, guys. screenshot it Boom. step four is reaffirmation this part is not so much as a step as just reaffirming to yourself that part one believe first you believe that it's true that you created your experience it's very important to do that uh, it's reaffirming for yourself that the experiences that you you created them believe that you did that the experiences nudge you towards your ultimate desire okay so step one is like Part one of step four is reaffirm your belief in the fact that you are the author. And part two is once you actually go through the process, the more you go through it, your belief becomes knowing. You know that it's true. And by being a, detect a detective of your own experiences, you realize the truth that you are the author of the experiences. Yeah. So and um, is, I'll sh just reaffirm. Reaffirm the fact from just a belief level that, yeah, it, it's true to like, oh, I see how it's true in my life. Yeah, and I, I will note from just literally the third, this is the third time I'm going through the process. I can already see the patterns where I don't just believe that I'm the author. I know because it's like, it's amazing what, you know, Steve Jobs says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only do them back. I think that was the guy who quoted it. And it's like, this is how you connect the dots from stuff that's happened in the past because um, I realized we're not taught this in our culture, but from the ages of one, basically birth to seven, you're just soaking in your subconscious mind soaks in what's happening. And that's like, all right, this is how you human. This is what's normal. This is what's not. And that programming follows you for the rest of your life. And if you don't address it, it's going to remain the same. And you know, that could be, some people say, well, I just got a bad hand. It's like, yeah, you can get a bad hand in life. You might got a, a good hand, but at the end of the day, it's what you make of it. And it's realizing you can change your, um, your beliefs in your subconscious mind. Um, and I was watching this video of Mel Robbins with uh, this other Instagram psychologist. I forgot. She's super big. Um, I'll co we'll put her in the description when you share it. Um, but she was saying how like, most of the time when we're going today, we're running on autopilot and that autopilot is basically what your subconscious mind is run by your subconscious mind. So it's recognizing that, all right, you're going to be running on autopilot for some parts of your day. But to, when you get that negative, quote unquote, negative intense experience or, or that trigger, what it's actually doing is your subconscious mind is notifying your conscious mind that there is something here that needs addressing. And it's just like, it finally clicked to me and it's like, it's as simple as getting a piece of pepper and pen. And uh, there's a lot of science into how writing actually rewires your neural networks. And it also puts that information in long-term recall and short-term recall. So it's just like second day I'm doing this. And I have this confidence now that I haven't felt in a while where it's just like, I got this. Like, cause Mind you, this past month, I had a, a bunch of PTSD and things pop up after basically almost a year of nothing. It was just like a year where I'd really worked through a lot of things. And I was like, all right, I'm past the, uh, the worst part. And then it was just like, boom. And it was just like, okay, I've clearly not worked on everything. I still have a lot of work to do. And it felt very overwhelming. And I didn't know what to do. Ended up finding Charlie Rocket a couple days before I messaged Alexi. Just got in this different mind state of someone who is doing what I want. And then I was like, Ooh, Alexi's working on this mentor thing you know, I'll share what I'm doing. And we realized we could collaborate, do these live walkthroughs. So give us some feedback on stuff that you need, but it's like, I'm imploring you, please try this, do this for yourself because you'll actually be surprised. It seems too easy, 
but it's powerful. So step five, let's keep going. Step five, again, step one, we looked at how, what the incident, um, again, what did you actually want to create before the incident and what the experience allow you to accomplish. Then we're looking at it, okay, we're seeing how you're the author of it. Now that fact that you see that you're the author of it, you're like, okay, how am I reframing this as a positive? How did it actually help me achieve the thing I always thought about even consciously about it? Or so the time you thought, I want A, I want A, and you got the experience, and you realize that you were the author of that experience, then you reframe it as a positive thing, you start believing, and then you know that you were, that, that is actually the fact in life. And step five, this is where a lot of times people actually jump into this step instead of going through one through four first. And this is, let me flip the camera. Uh, your, your microphone, oh, there we go. So step five is about what lessons did you learn about the situation and about yourself? Again, a lot of times people jump into, well, I learned this, 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 and this, like, uh, and then they react like this and I did this. And I felt like this because of that. You eventually get to this, like, what lessons did you learn? Um, and it almost seems like a repeat of the process. This is getting very specific, saying, okay, what lessons did I learn about the situation, okay? Well, Anthony, he was sharing that, okay, this is where you really get clear about that. When somebody tries uh, to push me to do something I don't want, I need to be clear about my values and stand my ground, kind of thing. What did you learn about yourself? Well, if he actually, well, in this case, he let that line get crossed again and again and again and again. See, Anthony, this is this is where we're going. Let, let's dive into like, okay, what lessons did you actually learn about the situation and about yourself? This is where you guys actually see the nuts and bolts of the process so that should this happen another time in your life, you're aware of it, you catch it very early on and, and get rid of it or stop it before it gets all out of control. So I'm breaking down the situation one. So what I started off with, what popped into my head, like what did the situation teach me? Don't suffer for others. Um, coming back to don't be a martyr. Um, but then I was like, maybe to try to clarify it. I'm like, you can't save others because suffering for others implies you're trying to help them with something. But I've realized with how hard it is to change yourself, it's not possible to change others. You can't save somebody else. Um, so that situation taught me you, I have to focus on myself. I think that'd be the key takeaway. I must Focus on me. So this is this is getting really into the nitty gritty of the actual things to be doing. So we actually have it says a minute and fifty five left. Alright. Let's do um, um let me, let me finish six. up self. Oh yeah, go step six. So step six is this don't blame the key players. Take on the responsibility because you are the author. This is just an affirmation, guys. And the quote that I got yesterday is, don't get mad at people who are acting out the script you wrote, essentially. That just means you're a bad director. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, we're going to continue doing these uh, over the next, each day we're going to be releasing one episode as we work out the times. We're both in a different time zone, six hours. It's... Um, our first time doing this, so any pointers or tips, any questions you have would be awesome. And um, I'm really excited 2 to. 2 p.m. Hawaii and 8 p.m. 